ऐ बाद सबा आहिस्ता चल यहां सोई हुई है महक परी बेगम हजरत महल uh, in many ways represented the modern woman you know she was multifaceted she was strong willed and she believed in her own identity even though she was a queen and a concubine before that she believed that she was an individual who could think for herself and she became such a leader so in that context we have to go back to 1857 and celebrate women like begum hazrat mahal begum hazrat mahal started off life as a courtesan her name was mohammadi khanam she was sold by her aunt to a court agent her father was in the army and she didn't have a mother so instead of looking after her the aunt who was supposed to look after her sold her to these agents she came to the court trained in dancing and became a courtesan and she rose through the ranks she became the you know the king's favorite as a courtesan and ultimately she became his confidant he used to call her sabspari and after that somehow she convinced him to marry her and of course you know when birji's kadar uh, their son was born she was declared the queen i think maybe two aha moments uh, one was when she threw away her piles and because somebody was not whistling at her but making some kind of derogatory comment when she was singing and dancing in co- in the court and uh, she wanted dignity and respect and the other when she declared war on the british she said it doesn't matter if my pia jaane alam if the king has been banished to calcutta i am king and queen i am mother and father and you better believe it Begum Hazrat Mahal was different from her contemporaries in the sense she didn't believe that a woman was you know should just be consigned to the kitchen or to the harem to entertain men she believed that they were individuals you know in themselves and they could think for themselves and they could be leaders and she proved it and there are incidents in history when people tittered when she danced in court as a courtesan she would put her foot down fling her ghungurus and sit down and sulk and when the king asked her she had the audacity to tell the king who later of course become a, became a husband that she was not interested in continuing if she was not respected for her art so she really rose from the ranks only because of her astute intelligence and her skills there were a lot of people in the population who didn't accept her as their queen because she belonged to the same community she was an ordinary woman you know she was as ordinary as they were and besides you know she was a, since she was a courtesan they didn't believe that they needed to respect her and certainly not accept her as a queen uh, but she but she fought all that and she she came out a winner especially when she led her people against the british there was no way that they didn't respect her after that and she became an icon of her time and she had a whole regiment of women trained to battle just like men they were also dressed like men many times you couldn't make out that this warrior is a man or a woman till the woman was fell to the ground and her turban came off and her long hair uncoiled and they realized or her breastplates were you know torn asunder they realized it was a woman and they were shocked and they were very brave they fought to the last they were no less than their male you know their male counterparts so these actions made her the natural leader of uh, her army which of course mainly com- comprised of men it was quickly realized that she was probably a far greater leader than her husband was she was such a unique amalgam of talent skill and uh, uh, courage you know really do you come across a woman who has who's so completely feminine 
is also masculine. In fact, there were so many intrigues in court. People were hoping to depose her and bring in the British. But she proved more than a match to all those men. So where do you find these qualities in a woman, even today? She was an ideal combination. I would call her an Ardhanareshwar. She was an ideal combination of the man and the woman, and it's very difficult to find leaders like that. She was called a merciless traitor by the British because she was fighting them. And she was merciless in the sense that in Alam Bagh, she locked up their children and their wives, all the women folk of the families of the British she was fighting, and she had them killed. She said, what have they done? Haven't they completely finished our families? Haven't they killed our children? So she says, I'm only repeating the barbarity of the British. When they showed us no mercy, why should I show it to them? She became a real nuisance factor for them because every time they would defeat her, she would come back with greater or a smaller force. You know, she kept nibbling away at the, at the territories in Awadh, which was a very important region for the British. She wouldn't let them lie in peace or to administer the region. And they pursued her. They pursued her out of the country and she entered Nepal. Well, she entered Nepal and the Rana over there refused to give her shelter because he was terrified the British would attack him and she bribed her way to that shelter. She died many years later, unknown, unrecognized, un not celebrated and she died a broken-hearted woman because she could never go back to her country and her heart bled for her country and she was so homesick. She was a poet and she wrote a lot of very sad and beautiful poetry about, Avad, about her country and how she was yearning to be back and to assimilate in the dust of her country, but she couldn't do it. Ek tamanna thi ki azad vatan ho jaye Jisne jine na diya, chain se marne na diya Zulm ki aandhiya बढ़ती रही लम्हा लम्हा फिर भी परचम को आसमां से उतरने ना दिया शी सर्टनली हैज बीन मार्जिनलाइज इन हिस्ट्री आई मीन यू हियर ऑफ लक्ष्मी बाई डू यू हियर ऑफ हजरत महल नो आई थिंक वन ऑफ द रीजन मे बी दैट शी वॉज अ मुस्लिम क्वीन मे बी हर रिलीजन हैज समथिंग टू डू विद इट इन अ कंट्री दैट हैज अ मेजोरिटी कम्युनिटी ऑफ हिंदूज But today, what matters is that she was a freedom fighter. She loved her country and her people, and she fought, you know, for them till the end, till she was pushed out of the country. But I think we need to commemorate her, celebrate her life much more than just erecting statues and you know issuing stamps, because we need more women like her. I think she needs to be celebrated more.